So in today's video, everybody, we're going to have a look at this T exercise here. Now, I'm sure you've seen the pros doing this exercise. You see it sometimes when you're watching a snooker on the TV. If you look at the table in the background, the pros will be doing this as a bit of a warm up before matches. Now, I made a nice break. I made a 147 in this exercise. So I thought I would show that video and just talk through some of the key things I'm thinking. Now, I know what you might be thinking when you're watching a video like this. Well, I'm struggling to make a 30 break. What's the point in me doing something like a T exercise? Well, I think even if you're at that level, you can still try and beat your own highest break all the time. So there's nothing wrong with having a go at something like this. And I also think all the things that I'm going to talk about in this video, so in terms of my shot selection, some of the key things I'm thinking, and then when I'm playing the white into certain areas, they're all really important things that you want to try and think about in your own game. So even if you're at that standard where you're trying to beat your highest break, go from 30s to 40s, this video can still be very useful because it gets you thinking in the right way. So all the usual stuff as well. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like it. Remember to give me a subscribe if you're new to the channel. So let's have a look then at this exercise and see how I did and what I was thinking. Okay, so this is the routine. I've just set myself up in a, a random position here, just nicely positioned on the red to get to the black. Now I'm going to try not to pause the video too much here, but I will pause at certain points just to show you exactly what's happening with the white, maybe draw some lines on the screen. Um, but the cue ball is going to be displayed, as you can see, for each shot to be able to see what spins I'm putting on the cue ball. So, on and off the black cushion with this first black here, this will leave me in a position where I'm on all three of the, the reds that you can see. So I was playing on all three of these reds, really. And I know that I'm going to be on one of them good, whichever one I land on best, I'll take that. Now, this bottom red obviously gets rid of the probably the hardest one. So bottom, a little bit of touch of left-hand side just to take me away from the black. Now on this shot here, if I just pause it on this one, I know that the natural path, if I just play top spin on the white, is coming over here, and then the white's coming back over here. Now that's an excellent area to put the white in, because that leaves me on these three reds here, and it also leaves me on these three reds here, as well as this one below the black. So as long as I play that shot and just take myself up into that area, I'm always saying to players, don't try and be too precise. Leave yourself in an area where you really feel like you can't fail in terms of position. So this is the red I've landed on best, this one here. So I can play just topspin again, just on and off the side cushion, leaving myself nicely on the black again. And now this time I've got, I'm straight enough on the black here that I can just play a little holding shot for these two reds here. So I can just play the black, little holding, soft little screw, and that takes me to these two reds. Now, I will just say that on this red here, now I am going to, so if I just pause it once I'm down on the shot, so on this one, I am actually going to play top and left-hand side, so that when it comes off these cushions, it actually flicks the white a little bit wider up here, and then back more out into open play like that. If I didn't play the side, there would be a danger that the white would find its natural path and I'd finish very low down here on the black, and I wouldn't be nicely on the black, and then I'd be risking then as well, cannoning as I pop the black into these balls. So, a bit of top, left-hand side just to help it flick up off those two cushions, and that's now left me almost this same shot again to go over here, back out into open play like this. So I don't know if that line's perfect, but that kind of line, back out into open play, and again, choice of reds. I knew I'd got these three here, and this red below the pink again. So this is just nice and straight, so keep nice and still. Just middle ball, just let the white just naturally roll through. Again, perfectly positioned on the black here. And I've got a choice here now. I can play to hold for this last tricky red here. And of course, I always like to try and do that. So I could have bounced up and gone for one of these reds. But the reason I like to get rid of this red is just because it's the last difficult one that's below the black. So obviously all the pots are difficult, but it's the most difficult one that I'm leaving there. So now I can just play up into an area again, somewhere like here. As long as I get the white up into that area, I'm just leaving myself again on choice of red. So I'm playing almost for all of the line of reds down the middle of the table. So just looking where I've landed, and I think I'm nicely on one just to roll through nicely for the black here. So yeah, just a little rolling through shot. And you can see I'm always trying to leave myself, so I'm not landing. This would be straight on the black, but I'm trying to leave just little angles where I'm just above that line look, so I can bounce the white up and get the white back out into open play. 
Now that was a bit of a poor shot. I was actually playing for this red here. And this one below the pink actually goes. So I can play this red now and screw back. Just nudging the other red slightly and get back to the black again. So it's all about technique. Nice and smooth. Nudge the other red slightly and recovered it there. And I'm back in good position. So again, if I just quickly pause this. I'm actually looking now that these two reds here, so these two are the ones now that are causing me a problem because it actually looks like now that these two reds are only going to pop into this bottom corner over in that direction. So if we zoom back out, I'm thinking about those now straight away. I'd love to get onto one of those reds so that I can move it and then it will free up the other one as well. So again, putting myself in an area there just to quickly show you, uh, I've landed on this red to the corner, I'm also on this red, and then I'm also on this red here. So again, I've put the white in a position, it's almost like over here, where I knew I'd got multiple options with where the white was landing. So even though you're trying to stand the black and you're playing quite a precise break, you are playing in a nice, neat way where you're trying to leave yourself options all the time. Don't try and be ridiculously precise. So a little holding shot. And now again, I can try and get onto these two reds now that are causing the bit of a problem. So I'll play little soft shot there. Little cannon into the other red, but that's okay. And now I've left myself with, I think, just about okay on this red. And like I say, these were the two that were causing a problem, so I'm just hampered by that other red slightly. That's okay, I could roll through. Now, you'll see that what I had to do there, obviously, if I just quickly rewind, so if we just rewind to that shot, so I knew I was getting this cannon on the other red here, so I know I'm going to get this cannon on this red, so the white is going to run through and hit that red. So I've got to make sure I get enough topspin that I push through and move that red out the way to make sure I'm leaving myself good on the black. Now, you can see I've actually now knocked this red safe to the side cushion. So what I actually choose to do here is immediately try and get on this red because I'm putting myself in an area where I've got this red, this red, and this red to play on. So I've put myself in an area where if I land good, I'll take this red, the optimal one that I want to move because it's now in a difficult position, because I haven't landed good, I can take one of my backup ones. So I took one of my backup ones there. And now I'm nice, actually, unfortunately, a little bit straight on the black. So I could only screw back in a straight line. And that time I have landed where I can get this red now with the rest. And just play a little bit of left hand side. So if, again, if I, so I'm going to get my extension. If I just roll this through, there's a chance that the white will come more along this line and I'll be low on the black. If I play it with left hand side, it will check it up and it will come a little bit straighter. So I just roll this, so just drop it in, but a bit of left hand side and it will, you see the way it's straightened up and come along that top line? And that's just that tiny trace of left hand side just stopping the white from running too close to that black cushion and putting me in trouble. So now I've got all three reds to play on here. Now, I can just play topspin on and off the cushion, and the last, the worst thing you can do, so you're always thinking of problems that might happen in snooker, the worst thing I can do is come here and land a little bit short, and then it's very difficult to get back to the black. So what I actually do instead is I make sure I get, you know, back over here, get out into open play, that way I'm leaving myself this red and this red to play on. So really make sure here you don't over, sorry, you don't under hit the shot. You really make sure, look, I've got, right back out into the middle of the table. If anything, I want to overheat it because I've got this red and this red. So you're always thinking, leave yourself options again. Don't underdo it. So nice little roll through shot. Just making sure we look again that I'm not landed on this straight line, whether this would be straight to the corner. I'm just above that line. And now this shot here, I'm actually playing to bring the white off the black here and come up this line, something like that. Hopefully to leave myself both reds again, leaving you know this one to the corner and this one as well. And actually I'll just get a little bit too much topspin on and flick the red 
and it's actually not too bad. So you could play this shot now. So if we just look at the angle that the white's going to take, it's going to come off this red and go over here. Now, when it comes off, that's going to be the natural angle like that. Now, if you want to get a bit closer to the black, you could play lots of right-hand sides so that when the white comes off here, it then flicks down wider and comes down onto the black. But actually here, I don't really want to land straight on the black, so I just settle for, if I drop it in, I know I'm going to leave my white high up here, and that's good, because that will then leave me the natural angle to just get up somewhere into this position for the last red. So if we watch here, all I'd settle for here, and get it, I do just need the rest, but same shot. So I'm just playing some top spin, just let the white find its natural angle. So I just drop the red in, on and off the cushion, and I've just settled for this natural angle. So when the white hits the black, it's now going to come off the black, onto the black cushion, and then up into this direction for the red here, something like that. So I know as long as I get this black now, the white's just found its natural path up pretty much those lines. I'm just trying to draw these on live as I go along. Now this is just finished a little bit awkward because the blue is in the way. So you can actually see, let's have a look. So what I actually choose to do, you can see here that I've actually got the rest up in the air. So can you see the way I'm holding the rest here up in the air off the table so that it doesn't contact the blue here. So I'm holding it away from the blue. So not always a bad thing. I've got my arm fixed securely on the table here so it can't move about. And then I'm holding the rest head up in the air so that the, like I say, the rest's not going to hit this blue. So a bit of an unusual technique, but it would have been difficult to get the cue in there. And then what I'm going to try and do on this shot is I want the white to hit the red and stun along this line and try and leave myself a shot on the black, something like that. So feathering up, making sure I do enough feathers and aiming checks so I feel comfortable, and then play the shot, and I've stunned nicely onto the black. Now there's two options from this position. You can either go up here and onto the yellow like that, or you can try and screw the white directly up here, something like that. Now, out of the two options, this first one is dangerous because when you do this first option, so let's say the white comes off here and then it comes along this line, the margin of error you've got is very small. So if I was to land here, it's no good. If I land here, I still need the rest. So my margin for error is actually very, very small. I've got to get it within that gap there. So that's why I don't particularly like that line because I'm leaving myself a small area to land good on the yellow. Whereas if I can bring the white more up this line, I know that I've got all of this space here on the table to leave myself a shot on the yellow where I don't need the rest. So that's why I prefer here to play this shot with screw, direct screw, screw up the table and try and leave myself a guaranteed shot on the, on the yellow. If we just quickly rewind that shot, the other shot that's potentially available there is to pot the black and screw back off this cushion and then towards the yellow. But the problem was I'd got slightly too much angle and actually in reality if I played that shot I would have screwed straight into the middle pocket which is why I couldn't play it. So in the end I just played that direct screw up to the yellow like that and that guarantees me a shot. Now it's all about good queuing here. As long as I get a good pot on the yellow, I know I'm going to have a shot on the green. So I'm going to queue off the cushion so I've got a, a long enough backswing, nice pull back of the queue, and I've managed to leave myself nicely on the green there. So nice and happy with that. And then down into the shot, keep nice and still, just dropping it off the cushion, nothing to do with the white. So I've got that nicely. Now top spin here will take me off the brown up here and then down towards the blue. So I come off those lines and then down towards the blue and unfortunately it's just gone a little bit too far. So let's just now have a look at this shot. Now if I play with top spin here, the white's going to come off here and then it's going to come somewhere down this line like that, leaving me too close to the side cushion. So it might come a little bit closer here, but then natural angle is taking me down here, down towards the side cushion. So what I actually play is top and right hand side so that when it hits here, it comes off a lot wider, gets off this cushion, and then it comes down towards the pink like that. 
So the reason that's so important is this last line, this one here, you're coming in towards the line of the pink. So it doesn't matter where I land from anywhere from here all the way to here, I'm leaving myself a shot. So top, right hand side, let the white flick off the bulk cushion. So you'll see it now, watch the side. So it flicks off, off the side cushion, and then down that line towards the pink. Now this is just a little holding shot all about just trying to keep nice and still so low on the white nice little holding soft screw stroke stun holding for the black and that then leaves me perfect shot on the black where i can just play whatever shot you want nice positive shot there play a little screw shot and that was the break completed there so as i always say i hope you found this video useful everybody now if you watch this channel and you haven't subscribed then please make sure you do click subscribe the more subscribers I can get and the more views you're getting on the channel, it means that I can dedicate more time then to filming these videos, doing all the editing and some more ideas that I've got going on. So make sure you click that subscribe button. For anybody that would like me to help with their game personally, I'm working with players on this table, so the table that you see in my videos, I'm working on this table with players all the time to help them to improve their game. The details are in my description box below. You can send me an email, you can send me a WhatsApp message. I'd love to help with your game, so get in touch and we can work on improving your snooker one-to-one -one on the table. As always, I'll catch you in the next video, everybody. Cheers.